All right. It is 4.30, and I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Telehoma Planning Commission. Um, I look around, and I determine everybody is here, so we do have a quorum uh, to hold the meeting. And I will please ask um, Chris Roberts, Youth Minister at Telehoma First United Methodist Church, to lead us in the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Would you all stand, please? Let us pray. God of grace, we have gathered tonight to make important decisions for our community. And our prayer is, Lord, that you would grant that we may use only our best skills and judgment, keeping ourselves impartial and neutral as we consider the merits and the pitfalls of each matter that is placed before us. And always act in accordance with what is best for our community and our fellow citizens. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, let us say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Okay, if the uh, commission would please come to pages two through four, meeting, uh, meeting minutes from the past meeting, um, review for additions, corrections, amendments. Second. Second. Uh, motion and second to approve the minutes as printed on pages from pages two through four. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The minutes are approved. Uh, reports of officers and staff. Staff doesn't have any reports this evening. Very good. In the old business, we find we have a uh, subdivision text amendment four. Um, Lee, would you please <coughs> explain this once more so everybody will understand what's going on? Uh, like we discussed last meeting, this is to uh, replace the requirements for two ingress egress routes uh, with uh, for connectivity with uh, doing the. Uh, Inter or the connectivity index, We're measuring the links and nodes and dividing well, dividing the links by nodes and coming up with a ratio. Uh, purpose of it is for uh, connectivity and the movement of traffic through uh, new subdivisions, major subdivisions. To find major. Uh, that would be any like five or more lots or anything with new uh, like new streets or new utilities uh, created in them. Uh, there is uh, the change was there uh, allows if there's a second ingress point then it counts as two links so it gives them kind of a bonus for creating a second uh, ingress egress point. this um, there is one thing you um, we state the uh, you want to change the connectivity index ratio to 1.2 that's what I'm proposing proposing and yet when we were going through the explanations and the training shall we say of this <clears throat> you you made it fairly clear that the Average index or standard index was 1.5. 1 1.4. 1 1.4? Yeah. <coughs> okay. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, I was wondering if you would care to comment on why not go with 1.4, why are we, why are we going to 1.2? We're changing it from two ingresses or egresses, and now we're using this index. Why would not lowering it from what's typical? I, it was just a, a way of getting you know, the, the process in place. Didn't want to make it too burdensome, but uh, I mean, if, if the planning commission wants 1.4, I mean, we can change that in the in the motion to increase it to 1.4. What's the national average? Uh, it's usually about 1.4 when they use it, but uh, some of the other folks in the state, like uh, City of Columbia does 1.2. I believe that up in Franklin they use like a, a 1.5. Have you talked about doing an either-or option with the ingress egress versus 1.2, 1.4? At one point, did we talk about that last time? So, what's the, oh. Like have it, they can either meet that or meet this requirement. So are you thinking like they can either meet 1.4 or 1.2 or 1.4 no. or have an e two, e two, yeah. e two, or two e entries and e egress because yeah. oh. do we ever get in a situation where it could be they meet the 1.2 but there's only one way in and out mm -hmm. yes there could be a situation where that occurred well I mean did, did we change the other requirement like less than a year ago it was it last, was last summer yeah. It was last summer when we switched to the 1.2. And quite <coughs> honestly, no, 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 we I mean, not 1.2, but to two, two entrances and egresses. And uh, I understand that that could be considered an arbitrary kind of point, because but we had safety concerns uh, about being able to get in and out of subdivisions in the case of emergencies like fire and tornado or anything else where one of the entrances might be blocked and we wouldn't be able to get out and that's why we created that that portion we of created it. that and then we had the uh, development out at the split that you know initially didn't meet that requirement and we made them meet that requirement because it was what was at our in our and now we're turning around changing it right that's what's being proposed yes to and it's being proposed um, understanding that the ratio number that we would use um, is a for lack of a better word a unitless number in other words it can be variable depending on how the nodes are calculated and things so it's really not a a fixed number per se it is a a unitless number but in the plan that we're looking at we're offering um, if you have two as you point out if you have two ingress egress points that counts extra yes I think setting it at 1.4 would encourage yeah. the multiple ingress entrances and exits so it would be my thought if we're going to do away with requiring two entrances and exits, just go to the 1.4, thereby pushing to get the two entrances. And we wouldn't be going as high as, say, Franklin, who went to a 1.5 or something that really exceeds that national average, per se. But you said Columbia is a 1.2. Yeah, but they require uh, two entrances, though. They require two entrances. With so they have an either or clause. <laughs> uh. well, you ready for a motion? Any time. Mr. Chairman, I move that we modify the proposed uh, changes to go with a 1.4 index and recommend this to the board of mayor and alderman for final approval no you guys make the final approval oh this is when we make the final yeah. so we approve it right here yes. okay so i have a motion second and a second to modify the current request requested uh, wording changes to uh, set the connectivity index at 1.4 
and approve the wording in the subdivision requirements as that says. Uh, all of those in favor say aye. Discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Discussion. Yeah, yeah. All right. Further discussion. Yes. Now, if we're all of us are still up here next year, we're going to change this again to satisfy whoever or whoever's complaining. When that change was made last year, it was yeah. a mass change of our rate of our and that's just one it was how many pages of that was that part of that league when we did the mass change of this? Oh, well, no, we, we just went with a whole new regu yes. regulations and the other ones were so convoluted and, and self-contradicting that it was just you couldn't we couldn't have straightened it straighten it out so it was yeah so it wasn't like we just looked at this in partic this particular yeah there was a whole lot of clarifying wording that was done and uh, confusing wording taken out and several things like that well. But I mean, that we as the board had to deal with the fallout from that. Yes, you're correct. That, that's just my point. You know, are we doing something today? Yeah. You know, and I've seconded this, this motion, and now we're discussing it. Are we doing something today that's going to cause equal hardship down the road? It may, but just people, you know, just so people know. That was well, my question: Is this more difficult for the people who are developing land, or less? Mm -hmm. I would think it'd be. Yeah. Owners. It depends. Well, and yeah, that's where I was it going. It really does. I think you look at the 1.4 is definitely going to make it harder because there are ways that the 1.2 allows them to not make the lollipop as it's you know just the whatever, but it allows them a to little not flexibility. Have to have two. Not have two inch. And there are several spots in town where development can happen and they can do that. But, but to, to raise point, if you do 1.4, it may encourage them to put a second entrance. But which but what? But does 1.4 make it then easier than expecting an egress and an ingress? And then the other question I had on it, does that cause us to have safety concerns? With what you're talking about, the reason why for the double in, the yeah. ingress egress is like you look at a, one of some of the older subdivisions in town where there's just, that are very large that only have one yeah. entrance and exit point. And so if a tornado happens, tree goes yes. down. I would say with the nodes and everything else, if it was a smaller subdivision, there would be easier ways for them to access that besides the second entrance. If it's, say it's, a, it's got five, a little subdivision that has five to seven, mm -hmm. I would think it'd be easier to access that because you could see the house was on fire and they could get there. I don't know. But I think, I see what you're saying with the double yeah. entrance. It, 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 there was that, but um, I just hope it's not putting an undue hardship on people who want to develop subdivisions so mm -hmm. we can get people to move here. One question I have, Lee. Um, I know that we did utilize this for one subdivision last year uh, that was done over on the northeast side of town where we had to require a second one. Has there been a lot of problems caused by the two entrance egress situation. You've had a couple of subdivisions that uh, uh, that we've discussed with with uh, certain developers that had a couple issues with it. We, I mean, we had one out in the urban growth boundary. Um, I don't think they could have done as many homes. I don't know for a fact, but I'm thinking because they had some soul issues that they couldn't have got that many lots out there anyway because there wasn't any sewers. So. That's kind of you know it, it all into you know how the soil is going to turn out. I don't believe it would have been able to support as many houses as they were proposing. Uh, we had a discussion about you know someone wanting to develop the old Pinnacle Point site that was once part of that the uh, you know when they it, I don't know it might have been free somebody else time the Emerald Meadows uh, the Woodlands they brought like three subdivisions in at one time and somebody wants to develop the old site for or the site that would have been Pinnacle Point and we've discussed it but then they've came back with a, a, new, a different design that did have two so I mean uh, and I don't know where they are on that in that project if they're planning on going forward with it or not so so even when we required two, <coughs> it didn't create a lot of undue duress on the builders that were well, that would, that's a perspective. I mean, of course, they, you know, you're, you're talking about more money because you're having to put in a second entrance. You can, you know, 
uh, potentially lose a lot by putting that in but the you know the whole purpose that we're doing it is for safety it's not really for you know trying to make someone you know increase you know revenue on a, on a particular development well i'm looking at it from the standpoint of if we didn't create a whole lot of undue duress on the part of builders and we didn't retard building this last year based upon the two and this one we know that at, even at a 1.4 we give them flexibility to to have just what they need uh, other than depending on the subdivision size and its connectivity and there are other ways we saw of creating that connectivity yeah, I mean there's, there's there's more than one way to, to you know to do a development I mean I, I you know I, you, people have got workloads and so they don't want to you know maybe just don't have the, the necessary skills to be able to, to design a, a really creative type of development but wanted to give them the opportunity or the chance to be able to do it if, if they wanted to go and, and present something that would be you know a little bit out of the box but yet this would still support you know a standard subdivision as well too Any further discussion or questions? All right, then I'll call for the vote. All those, we have the motion and second on the floor to change the wording on the connectivity index or the number on the connectivity index to 1.4 and to approve the wording in the subdivision requirements as printed otherwise. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. Okay. Please record the one no. And the motion passes. So that covers <coughs> the old business. And now we'll go on to new business. And we have a site plan before us tonight. Site plans do, are not a public hearing. No, this, uh, the commission chooses just to hold one. Is there anyone here who wishes to drive a public hearing on this? Otherwise, I'll, I'll review the site plan with you and we can go from there. Hearing none at this point. Uh, the site plan is on pages 9 through 19. So 9 through 19 is the site plan request. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'm just going to go ahead and give Please explain, Lee. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be at 1151 East Carroll, which is on the corner of East Carroll and South Roosevelt uh, Street. Uh, they're proposing a, a 1,740 square foot uh, convenience store with uh, gas pumps. Uh, and they'll have landscaping and they've got the parking in. Uh, staff gives it a favorable recommendation. have any concerns about landscaping or anything well I mean we've got the yeah you got the situation of where we needed it to uh, allow them or we're going to request to allow them to put in landscaping instead of the sidewalk sections along <laughs> East Carroll and South Roosevelt Street so if we don't require them to do the sidewalking are we going to have to issue a variance on that no no you have the in the uh, streets and sidewalk and curbing ordinance and it gives the planning commission latitude to give waivers on the sidewalk at least on one side of the street that's required to have it and your um, reasoning for not putting the sidewalks in was well for aesthetic purposes and sidewalks right there probably wouldn't have been utilized or ever connected to or not in the near future anyway more the landscaping would be more beneficial to the city especially a, a gateway street into the city yeah this is this sits right on highway 55 so but the site plan itself right now has sidewalk on it for that space yes as opposed to putting on 
shrubbery. Putting landscaping. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, do I have a motion yet before we begin heavy discussion? I'll move to approve. I have a motion and second to approve <coughs> the request for the convenience store site plan as presented on here and now we couldn't begin serious discussion with the with the council is there anyone here to represent the very good because i have a couple of questions well just amongst ourselves before we start asking him stuff you know and i, and, and I brought this up more than once this town is dotted with sidewalks, no sidewalks, sidewalks, no sidewalks, which looks tacky. You know, mm -hmm. there's no uniformity. Mm -hmm. You know, and it may be years before sidewalks ever get down to that point, but you know, when do you know when do we decide who decides when sidewalk? Is it to us? Is this our purview? Yeah, you guys have. But that. I mean. It seems like there's a lot of sections in town, even on on the main drag, where you'll have a sidewalk and yeah. then it ends. That looks stupid. And it's unsafe. No. You know, are we doing that with this? Yeah, my question about it was if we take the side, uh, and one of the points that was brought up was the utilization of the sidewalk. Would it even be used? Because it would be right beside Highway 55 and how many people would walk or whatever along a sidewalk along Highway 55. There was that question that came well, up. Well, there are sidewalks probably to the hands-on hands -on side center, maybe. I'm not, I haven't been out that way. That's the opposite side of the street. Right, but I mean, there are sidewalks in areas yeah. there. Yep, that's true. In fact, I think there's a sidewalk just a little closer to town on that side of the street. You know, if I was uh, the magic unicorn up. and had a fairy wand, I would make them put sidewalks everywhere. But it costs money. It does. Yes. Mr. Chairman, in this, in this instance, there are no sidewalks Out in, there. That, in that area. Mm -hmm. If there is an option to put aesthetically looking uh, mm -hmm. trees, landscaping if you will mm -hmm. i'd certainly if i were coming into the town from that from manchester a visitor coming into town i would look at the aesthetics of of the landscaping as opposed to whether there was a sidewalk there or not that it was it was never used so in this case i'd certainly think that landscaping is an option is a, is a better option than a sidewalk right there it wouldn't be used Probably so. I'm just saying we do. We just you're right. We're sidewalks, no sidewalks. Well, sidewalks, no. We sad. have no uniformity, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's sad that it's an either or. So since you there's know? since there's no sidewalks there now, we can be uniform and not put sidewalks there and put landscaping in. And then down the road, if we grow or when we grow or I hope we grow, I'd like to see a sidewalk all the way to freaking Manchester. Or a, you know, like a bike trail or something. But like I said, if I was had a magic wand, all this is getting out to talking about money. But you know, they had that Billy Goat Trail from where Mon Eagle to Swanee. That was in the old railroad bed. Just a thought. Uh, but landscaping's better than having a bridge to nowhere. Well, because. That's then you get issue. safety issues when you start creating a sidewalk that just ends. For who? For who was walking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there also has they to be the question the of... They have of, more <laughs> problems than, <laughs> than safety. Yeah. And then there's also the question of, okay, if you put a sidewalk in, who's responsible for the maintenance of it and all See? that sort yeah. of stuff along the way, you know. We have someone that uh, yes. can address this issue somewhat. <laughs> well, uh, I'm Kenny Sadler from uh, Manchester, Tennessee, but uh, this has been discussed quite a bit, the sidewalk issue, and I have talked to the owner about it, and he is fine with putting in the planning versus the sidewalk. He'll do whatever the city wants him to do. Uh, so he will put in trees and shrubs in lieu of the sidewalk, if that's what, uh, so if there were a motion for it, 
it would probably need to include that since we do have on the plan that it is a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the authority to show it any other way, so y'all are the ones with the authority to put that in the motion that mm -hmm. you would rather have the trees and shrubs in lieu of sidewalk, but the owner has agreed to do that. Um was the issue of the entrance off of Roosevelt Street taken care of? I believe we've addressed all the issues with access. Uh, we've gone through TDOT. Actually, the ride in off of Roosevelt was a recommendation from TDOT. The additional driveway that you'll see that's 156 feet away from the Roosevelt intersection was also a recommendation by TDOT. So uh, we have we have discussed that in detail with the city and the state Very on good. access to the site. So that's been taken care of. Then the only other question I really have is because one of my kind of pet peeves right now is stormwater drainage. Mm -hmm. And since your drives that are going to be probably the major drives for entrance and egress are going to be going out to Highway 55. Uh, how are you controlling the stormwater uh, so that it doesn't flood Highway 55 and create a traffic hazard? Yeah, well, there, there's certainly no flooding going to occur from this side, uh, you know, just with the size of the side alone. Uh, but but we're actually adding grass areas to compensate for the asphalt areas. The entire site now is asphalt. So we're actually taking out asphalt in a fair um, number of areas there and replacing asphalt with grass. So we're ending up with a better situation than we normally would, where we're usually taking out grass and adding asphalt, you get an increase there. But in this case, we're doing the reverse. So, so it makes it work out a little better in this case. Scott, is the asphalt permeable, uh, so to speak? Just very slightly. Very slightly? It has, for example, complete impervious is a factor of one, asphalt is 0.95, so it essentially is, is impervious. Considered impervious. So what TDOT does is they review drainage very closely. Um, as, as Mr. Sadler stated, the bulk of this site is asphalt now. They look at the increase in the rate of runoff off the site. And they have not required any additional stormwater detention because it, it balances. Um, they look very closely at making sure that any sheet flow off of the driveway areas doesn't get out into the travel lane so that it doesn't cause a hazard there. And so that's part of the permit process that they have to work through. Okay. That, that relieves my concerns about that. But across the street from Roosevelt, from this side, is another convenience store, right? It is. Yeah, and they have wide open access. Uh, Do we have any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. Those in favor of approving the request for the convenience store site plan. Uh, so we said. Yeah, no, yeah, we have a motion and second. Okay. Uh, Lee, Sorry, we decide this one, not the mayor and alderman. So they're uh -huh. voting to approve it or not. Yeah. So we have to well, change it with yeah, the we changes. Have we talked about the greenery or yeah. the, which one? How was the motion I read? Was it with the motion did yeah. not include the greenery? Yeah. You'll have to make an motion. amendment. Yeah. You'll have to okay. motion to amend it. Is that what we have to do? You we have to amend it, and then we have to go back and vote on the motion. Yeah, we'll vote on the amendment in the motion. Yeah. So I make a motion that we amend this plat to um, let the developer substitute greenery and shrubbery instead of a sidewalk. Okay, I second it. I have a motion and second to amend <coughs> the site plan request to include shrubbery and grass and things as opposed to the sidewalks in the front. Uh, those in favor of approving that amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed no. 
the amendment is carried. Now we vote on the motion itself. So the motion itself with the amendment to add the uh, shrubbery, greenery, landscaping and such instead of the sidewalk and approve the final site plan. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The site plan's approved. Thank you. Welcome. The next one will be a public hearing, and this public will, hearing will hearing will be on zoning map amendment request 227, a request to rezone approximately 50 acres at 330 Ledford Mill Road from Agricultural A to R1 Low Density Residential. The requester is Mr. Jim Walters. Waters. Waters. Waters, I'm sorry. Uh, request begins on page 20 and covers till, let's see, uh, looks like 28. Okay. This is to be a public hearing. Anyone caring to address this commission on this subject will be allowed to do so. You come to the podium, state your name, address, and then you can make your statements. You'll be allowed two minutes to speak each. Uh, if you are the one speaking and the, the next one up wants to defer their minutes to you. They must come up and give their name and address and let us know they want to defer their minutes and you will be allowed those those two minutes. So I am opening now the public hearing on this subject. Well, now give an explanation, Lee. The, the, the request is to rezone the, the 50 acres from agriculture to uh, low density residential. Their, uh, the land use plan calls for that area to be low density residential as well. That was provided in the agenda packet. Uh, area of concern, uh, the, the plan that was submitted with it is a concept plan. It's, you know, it's, it's fine what was, you know, but that wouldn't be binding. So it could, you know, somebody else could bring something else in at the property sales or, you know, and with the amount of acreage they have there, there are, you know, got water and sewers, so there could be a possibility of 180 lots put on, you know, new lots carved out of that large tract there. And it's kind of concerned for Ledford Mill Road to have that many new homes or new lots on there. I mean, you would be looking at over 1,700 new trips daily just by that one development. So staff was recommending that we, uh, postpone it, let us look at it and bring it back next meeting with a, a more, uh, do some research and bring back a recommendation based on that research. How many lots are on the proposed development? 50. But what you're saying is if it's <coughs> the whole property sold, somebody else could develop it. Yeah, you can put a lot more in there. They can put up like 181 lots. Not unless we approve it. Well, then, yeah, but you, we, you remember if it meets all our regulations, then it gets into a situation of, uh, and we open up sort well, of Why do we have a planning commission? That was my argument. Yeah. Well, uh, and if you look at the planned uh, subdivision that's presented here, this is one of those that presents exactly what I was concerned about before it, because if you look he's created a tree section here with only one entrance and egress again that's just a concept so he's not looking to get a approval and, for that plat yeah but but that's that's what he's got as a proposed thing right now and then he has another larger segment of subdivision over here with only one entrance and egress coming off of it so uh, this is one of those where, and I don't know, Lee, what was the actual nodes number we came up with? Oh, well, I mean, that, that scored about a, a 
Well, it scored 1.4. The, the See, so even with our 1.4 right now, they could develop this, and you would have to, basically because it's being treated as one subdivision, it all counts together, so it scores a 1.4, and yet you basically got two separate subdivisions with only one entrance and egress on either one of them. So I have concerns about that, but. Left Mill Road, um, the, the traffic on it that would be coming from this, that was, would you, if, if we postpone it, would that be something you guys would be looking into and come back with? Yes, it, it would be, you know, trying to look at what the impact is. Because I keep hearing about the road there anyway and how it's got issues, so. And, you know, we've got a lot of development planned in that area. Already. Yeah. We're developing an industrial park, so there's a, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. Yeah. When looking at development along that street. What are we going to look at if we develop, if we delay it a month what are, what well, we yeah. might come back with a recommendation of maybe doing a text mm -hmm. minute to the zoning ordinance yeah. to uh, create a, a, a different residential district with uh, larger lots required you know minimum lots so it would decrease the amount of uh, you are I'm Jim Waters Jim Waters and uh, you know, I hired an engineer I don't know anything about it and I just told him to go out there and draw what he thought would be feasible for the City of Tallahoma. Understand. And I have, and if you notice, there are, there are some really large lots in this subdivision. And uh, I paid a man sixteen thousand dollars to drain it to make sure it's drained. And uh, you know, I, uh, you know, if I sell it, I'll sell it with fifty some whatever the lots are. You know, and that's what I expect whoever's going to develop it would develop it. But that's not for me to I don't say. But anyway. I thought he did a good job. He's an engineer. Was recommended highly by some folks here in Tullahoma. And uh, to answer your question about the roads, uh, I built the road to the big section, and it's uh, built real. It's 50 feet wide and six feet deep of red dirt, and it's really the only way you can get into the back side of the property because I built a lake. If you notice, there's a lake in the middle, and then of course the other comes off the left for some mill road. And uh, you'd have to interest it there, I guess, if you did it some way. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I asked you to approve it. I'd like to move on with this thing. Because I used to farm it, and I've got too old to farm, and I, I'm not going to raise cattle there anymore. But I used to. Okay. But I want to I help tell the home, and I want to do the right thing for tell the home. But, uh, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen anybody putting 180 lots in there. Gosh almighty. Uh, I mean, it looked pretty good to me. and. Uh, matter of fact, I talked to Lane about it, and that's kind of what he and I came up with the size of those lots because I didn't have a pool. So, uh, anyway, uh, I wouldn't want to make them any bigger, and, uh, and I really wouldn't want to make them any smaller, to tell you the truth. Would us postponing this for one month to do some further studies and things and be able to come back next month? Uh, to make a decision, would that put an undue hardship on no, you? No, sir. No, sir. It really wouldn't matter. Not, not, I just want to do what's, what you guys think is right. And, uh, well, we looked at Lee for guidance yeah. as far as what well, we need to do. Lee knows he what he's he, he told me the other day I could get 181 lots. I looked at him like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it'd probably be uh, more beneficial to me to sell it that way because I could get more. I could sell it per lot and probably make a lot more money. So. <laughs> Whatever Lee comes up with is what I'm going to go with. Okay. okay. All right. So we have a motion. motion. No, we're in the we public do not hearing. have a motion yet. Oh. We're still in the public hearing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, I'd like to say something because I appreciate you guys <laughs> serving on this board because I used to okay. I, used, I used to sit up there as where you're sitting and I know <laughs> how much you get paid. <laughs> but, I pre but I appreciate y'all serving and, and, and uh, I work with Mr. Lawson any way he wants to. So I, I feel that he's a very confident person. So so next time will be fine with me. All right. Thank you. Question. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Yes. One one point that uh, I serve as a liaison from the city to the airport board. Yes. And I know that uh, this is right across the street from where you have the uh, air park there that's being developed. It's commercial, commercial air park there. And uh, it's right at the end of the two, four, six runway. Uh, I don't dispute you where it's not. It's a long ways from the 
into the runways because up that's a taxiway that's not the main two full I, I've cut that I've cut that hey I've got too much hay out there to know it's not, it's, not, it's not even close to the end of the runway so I had to always dodge the airplanes yeah so it just you know you get the air part right across the road yeah uh, right and but it's not even close to an approach zone I know that postponing this one you can, month ride, you can ride out there and look at it course. would allow me an opportunity to, to discuss this with the airport okay with their terms and their board and to uh and uh and that i've served that role i feel an obligation to represent them on on this commission as well as uh, you so thank you for the opportunity to do that yeah i'll be fine all right thank you very much do we have anyone else that wants to speak to this tonight? If not, then I'm going to close the public hearing and entertain a motion. I'll uh, make a motion that we postpone the vote until the next planning commission on Monday, August 19th. Second. I have a motion and second that we postpone the vote. At which time, because I had no one come forward and, uh, from the public, I will once again ask this to be a public hearing. We will give the public a chance to speak to it at that time as well. All those in favor of the motion to postpone, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. We will postpone until the following meeting. Next public hearing, uh, Zoning Map Amendment 228, a request to rezone 2.44 acres at 611 East Monroe Street from C2 to I2, uh, C2 being general commercial, I2 being industrial, heavy industrial. Heavy industrial as presented on pages 29 to 32 35 35 36 what happened here i got the recommendation right in the middle how'd that happen okay all right yeah this is all part of it 36 37. Okay. Right, so Chairman, this, can I go ahead and give you make an explanation, yeah. please. Uh, it's a 2.4 acre lot. Uh, we want it to be heavy industrial. The uh, land use plan that's adopted calls for the area to be used like as heavy industrial. There's uh, heavy industrial zoned lots already across the street. Uh, the proposed use would fit in that district. It's a distribution and a warehousing facility for a vending machine company would is the would be the use and staff gave it a paper recommendation okay so um the same rules this is a public hearing for anyone wishing to speak to this topic and i will open the public hearing for people. Do we have someone representing the uh, requester? No. Anyone else who wishes to speak to this issue? Seeing no one come forward to speak to this issue, I'll proceed to close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the request for this rezoning from commercial to industrial. Any discussion for the commission? Hearing none, I'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor, uh, this will be a favorable recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Alderman on this request. Those in favor of sending a favorable recommendation say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The recommendation is made.
the next thing on the list in public hearings is a zoning text amendment 219 amendment to the zoning ordinance with the following adding the term shipping container in article 2 of the definitions and replacing section 503 locations of accessory buildings with proposed section 503 accessory uses and structures lee will you please explain okay the first one is just have a definition for shipping containers uh, one of the regulations that are, is uh, proposed is not to allow them as being used as accessory structures in residential uh, zone districts and uh, second one is to it's actually reestablishing the uh, accessory use and structure section from the previous ordinance into the current ordinance but right now it just addresses the location of accessory buildings so it leaves a lot of things a lot of situations unaddressed by the ordinance that we come across on a daily basis so the purpose of the amendment would be to address those that issue and be able to give better guidance to staff and to the citizens by listing uh, appropriate accessory uses uh, with uh, along with the principal uses but the uh, locations of the accessory buildings would be the same as it is right as it's written right now in the ordinance so basically the first thing we do is define a shipping container as the kind of containers that sit on 18 wheelers and travel around and are used for shipping or railroad tracks or, or railroads or, or anywhere railroad else tracks. like that well you can see the the proposed definition on page 41 it's at the top If we do this issue, um, will this be effective on places where these this condition already exists? Are we making it effective on them? We talking about people that have, that have put storage units on their on their residential well, lot, like, like stores or no this wouldn't affect anything in commercial zone district it would just be in residential districts as far okay. as the lim limiting the use of so this is like somebody puts one next to their house right if they ever would although i can't figure out well why. you'd be yes, surprised <laughs> but it would apply to existing yes situation. yeah yeah mm -hmm. move them yes so they're wondering where are they want to put this Excuse me. Where are they want to put this? Up front, to the side, to move. Are oh, you talking about if they have a shipping container? Yeah. You know, they, we've had some people put it in the front yards and left those iPod containers, just left them there. And they were, you know, they're not supposed to be up there for permanent use, but they, they were leaving there. And we had a whole situation of going to uh, the administrative hearing officer and everything. Okay, so the standard rules apply. This is going to be a public hearing with all the rules as stated. So I will open the public hearing. For anyone who wishes to speak to this issue, please come to the podium. Seeing no one coming forward, I'll close this public hearing and entertain a motion. Move to approve the text amendment. Second. And, and recommend approval to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. <coughs> I'm sorry, you got to say that. I can't say it for you. Move to approve the text amendment. Propose this to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for approval. And you seconded it, Jimmy? Mm -mm. No? Who uh, did? Scott, you did. Scott, Scott did. Scott. Okay. So I have a motion and second to approve this text amendment to the zoning requirements and send a favorable recommendation to the board of mayor and aldermen any discussion from the commission yeah lee tell me what we're doing here <laughs> still sort of well you're you're adding 
you're creating a definition for shipping containers or we're, we're creating a regulation that doesn't allow them in, to be used as accessory structures in the residential zone and then we're adding uh, accessory uses back into the zoning ordinance which is the same uh, dis excuse me the same section that was in the previous zoning ordinance to address accessory uses and to allow accessory uses that are appropriate to the principal uses in specific districts Okay. So in other word, like outbuildings and things like that? Well, that's already been addressed with the uh, accessory building regulations. This gets into actual accessory uses and which ones are appropriate which with principal uses. Okay. Okay. Well, have any other questions? Other questions? And we'll proceed to vote. Those in favor of approving the text amendment as printed and sending a favorable recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay, that's his own text amendment. Any other new business to come before us tonight on the, in the uh, Planning Commission? I don't believe we have any. Um, so I have a motion to adjourn the Planning Commission meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to close the Planning Commission meeting. Those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is closed. We will move to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, and we have uh, no unfinished business, but we have new business to come before us in the request of a variance. Mr. Chairman, you, yes. you got to uh, approve the minutes from the last board of Oh, oh I'm sorry. Approve the minutes, it's number, okay? It's number Which three. are on page 44. <laughs> so take a look and. Do we have a motion? Motion approved. Second. Motion and second to approve the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting uh, previous minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Minutes are approved. And now we can go on to the variance request, a request for variance from Zoning Ordinance Section 503.3, location of accessory buildings to allow a 100 square foot accessory building to be located in the front yard and partly inside the East Grundy Street right of way. Inside the right of way? Okay. Uh, at 210 East Grundy Street. The applicant is Miss Cynthia Kinney, Director of Good Samaritan of Tullahoma. The documents begin on page 40. Five and carry to the end, I believe, don't they, Lee? Yes. Okay. So this will be a <coughs> this will be a public hearing on this subject. Anyone wishing to speak to that? The rules that apply to the planning commission will apply to this public hearing, and I will open this public hearing for comment. Oh, excuse me. Make an explanation. Uh, okay. I'm well, sorry. You, you, you I always should it. ask you, that. You, you, you've read it, and we've and I've looked over it. Unfortunately, the staff cannot give it a favorable recommendation. Okay. We give it an unfavorable recommendation. An unfavorable recommendation. All right. One further thing. Uh, this is more than a request for a variance because it's a request to erect a building on a public right of way. So we also involve, if there were a favorable action on this, a request uh, for servicing of that property so the building could be built there. I see no request to service the no, property. No, it's not here, but I said it would involve that if you over to approve that. Because the variance, the ordinance of, of providing for variances does not address at all variances that would also utilize public rights of way, any kind of thing. All right. State your name and your address for the record. 
Uh, good afternoon. I am Cynthia Kenny, and I am the Executive Director of Good Samaritan of Tullahoma. Uh, I had planned a PowerPoint presentation, but apparently that's not going to happen. Uh, our, our computer doesn't interface with your VGA cable. Oh, okay. Well, if we don't have a wireless yet, sir. So, uh, so I got, you might have Yeah. Uh, if you want, I have them on uh, Dr. Blanks. I have them on a memory stick if you just want to put them on your computer. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't take any outside of devices on my computer. Sorry. I understand. <laughs> you could um, be Jesus and I wouldn't let you do that. Okay. I believe you have some uh, leaf you in yeah, in the packet. Everything. There's some pictures. Yeah, I put everything in the packet. I said I put everything in that you submitted. Okay. Well, we'll just try to uh, fly by the seat of our pants then, and hopefully my dialogue will match up to your photos. Um, how many of you are familiar with the Good Samaritan of Tullahoma in what, in what we do? So you know that uh, we were chartered back in 1985 by Tullahoma churches of all denominations in order to work together to provide for the area needy. Uh, we have a ministry and a thrift store, and our ministry allows us to di distribute food. We provide relief aid to those in need uh, for utilities and rent and medicine. We have a dignity campaign, which we provide basic cleaning and personal hygiene supplies. We have a baby boom project, which allows us to provide diapers, wipes, baby food, formula, clothes. And we also have an am animal harbor program, which allows us to provide pet food, cat and dog food to the distressed families. Uh, we are thrift store is open from nine to two, Tuesday through Friday and 9 to 3 on Saturday and we sell usable household items clothing that is donated uh, we can sell for a dollar a piece and the, the main thing is that the thrift store proceeds significantly help fund our ministry programs and this is where the problem begins uh, currently, our after-hours donation closet poses a health and safety risk to the public and to our employees and volunteers. This is because the closet is not large enough to hold the multitude of clothing, shoes, sheets, blankets, and other donations we receive during after-hours when we are closed. Uh, the following photos show our current process and the capability to accept our after-hour donations. Uh, I think, Lee, is the first one the Google Earth? Uh, the first one, the, the, the attachment A1 was just of the building. The, the, the that we're proposing? Yeah, the uh, place for you, page 58 would be I let me do this this is the uh, I don't know if you have this in your packet it's the Google Earth okay uh, and uh, this uh, Google Earth photo with the property lines and the center of Grundy Street from the TNGIS property viewer map data looking at Good Samaritan property lines. Then the next two photos are looking down East Grundy, and I think you may have this. It looks like this, where you see uh, the public sidewalk and parking on the left and the after hours donation sign on the right indicating where to place donations. Then the next three photos 
are approaching the donation area where the closet is located and the donation closet is approximately, and I think you have this in your packet, it is two feet by five feet wide. And this is kind of open, the door opening to the closet. And then this is the inside of our collection closet. Then the next three photos shows what happens during the night or after we are closed. And you'll see a photo that looks like this. <coughs> and another one that looks similar. These are donations that are left after hours. Uh, and this shows that we have people who take the bags out of the donation closet, rip them open to steal the clothes, or steal the clothes, and then they sell the clothes for other purposes. We have found in the morning, we go and clean this area up, we have found drug needles, trash, fecal matter, uh, urine-soaked clothes, either human or animal, and at times we have found homeless people asleep in the closet or on the front porch on ripped open bags of clothing. The next two uh, photos, and you may not have these, will show bags of clothing that have been dragged to the back of the building, our building, and ripped open. In addition, we have had uh, found bags of clothing in the back of the offices facing Lincoln Street. Such as this. We have received more than once phone calls from Dr. Long's office saying you need to come over and pick up this mess. He's got a nice green area in the back of his office and often bags of clothes have been ripped open and torn apart and there's a nice mess in his yard. Uh, they're often found around their trash cans in that alleyway. Also uh, we have picked up clothing from the dumpster at First Presbyterian Church. To alleviate this public and employee safety and health issue, we have looked at several options based upon constraints of our building, location, parking, and public access. We have researched many uh, clothes collection bins and containers which are very expensive and basically they're not large enough to accommodate the number of donations we receive. In discussion with Watson Barnes, we have been made available to us a 10 by 10 outdoor shed shown in these photos, and I believe you do have these. We would uh, modify this, this shed to include a drop chute for all of the clothing bags, shoes, and the like. We are also willing to paint the exterior of the shed and put plantings around it so that it looks more acceptable than a shed sitting on a front lawn. Uh, I want to point out, in addition, uh, I have called our local police department and you can see they have made many trips to Good Samaritan because of the theft that has occurred. So uh, why this is important is that because these donations allow us to support the community in many ways that you are not aware of. I just want to run a couple of numbers by you.
that being that we directly helped 4,570 people and 1,871 families in the past year. The Good Samaritan support activities in the fiscal year ending May 31st, 2019. We provided food to 972 families. We provided funds to pay utility bills for 259 families. We provided funds to help with housing expenses to 87 families. We provided personal care items, basic cleaning supplies, uh, baby gifts and pet food to 553 families. In addition, Good Samaritan uh, for the second year in a row uh, supported or sponsored Another Day of Hope which helped 276 persons this year with services and food and clothing. Uh, we work side by side with Tullahoma Post Office and we help them during the National Association of Letter Carriers Food Drive. Uh, currently, I'm working with Tullahoma Police Department. Uh, we are working on their emergency food pantry program. Uh, we work with Coffee County Senior Center, Tullahoma Daycare Center, Tullahoma Housing Authority, Shepherd's House. Uh, we help the uh, residents at Everlasting Journey. Uh, we also support Veterans and Family Courts Services of Coffee County. In summation, we would be grateful for you to approve our request for this variance so we can continue to serve those in need in our community. Thank you. I don't know if any of you have any questions. I have a few. You know, I think y'all do wonderful work. Thank you. Um, and I think, you know, the problem is that, you know, the problem y'all are experiencing is not, in my opinion, going to be solved by building right there. I mean, wherever you put your building, it's not going to change the nefarious action mm -hmm. of bad people. Mm -hmm. Whether you put it there, you put it in the back, wherever, they're still going to be getting in there if you have a shoot or whatever. But for us to, to, to allow that to go there, then, you know, right now, is the pickup spot up front or around back? It's, around, it's on the front. It's in the front. You know, to me, just as a first blush of this, I would put the pickup spot in the back and put fences or, or not let them drop off at night. You know, I don't, I don't think it, it is our, our job to figure out where the pickup spot mm -hmm. is, but you're making us decide whether or not you can have that up front. And, you know, what we're getting from our director is they're not giving a recommendation for that because we're having, we'd have to give a variance for it to be on city property. And then we'd have to, we would have to um, allow that to be surplus, right? Yes. Maybe. I don't know if we want to get into that. You know, if we could get that building around back or something, I don't have a problem with that, but where it's <coughs> right now is the problem. Uh, commissioners, help me. I think everyone on this board, if they've ever had any association with Good Samaritan, they would be very, very supportive of your organization. Yes. That being said, <clears throat> we're being asked to do, we're being asked to make a variance if we make a variance for you to do this, it turns out we had a request for almost a very similar situation just down the street from you. We turned that down. And I, I looked for precedent setting for one thing. Right. And this would be a precedent. <clears throat> I look at how fitting, how fitting that would be to have a shed. Uh, uh, an accessory building sitting in your front yard and actually sitting on city property. Mm -hmm. And while I am very supportive of Good Sam, I could not support this. You did a great presentation. Thank you. Do we have anybody else from the from the <clears throat> outside who wants to speak?
give us your name and address? Uh, John Paris, uh, address 210 East uh, Grundy Street. I'm one of the volunteers there, and I'm one of the ones that shows up at 8.30 in the morning and goes out front and goes through all this stuff and goes around back and dumps it. And I think the, the real issue that we're talking about here is how do we, one, keep the public safe in which, as she had mentioned, we've, homeless people go up there and still do stuff like that. I've actually gone up there and almost get stuck by a drug needle, okay? What we are proposing is a lockable one. Our current one is not lockable. So that picture that you have is a 10 by 10 shed with a roll up door on the back that locks and then on the front would be a drop chute. So nobody can get inside, they can't grab the bags, they can't take them anywhere. Then that would allow us the next morning to unlock the roll up door, take it around back. The reason we haven't put it around back is our gates are all locked. So there's no way for anybody to drop them off at night. There's no room on the sides because there's Poplar Alley on one side and the property line on the other side. There's none in the rear of the building because that's an easement across the back between the Good Samaritan and where uh, the offices are behind that. So the ideal place would be up front where the sign currently is that says after hours donation. To place it there, it would be partly on the property and then over the setback easement. It's not gonna be out in front near the sidewalk, okay? And currently, someone <coughs> at some point already gave approval because if you look at the front of the thrift store, the thrift store awning and porch and cover, it encroaches on that easement already. So we're not doing something that hasn't already been done. It's not something new, okay? So we looked at it and said, this was what we thought was the best to do. Uh, thank you for your time. Anyone, anyone else wishing to speak from the public? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Entertain a motion on this request for variance. I'll make a motion to deny the request. What's our options? If, it, if we don't deny it, it's approved? What do we have to do? No, if you, if, if you, if he's made a motion to deny the request. Right. If nobody seconds, it dies for a second, right. but somebody has to make a, re, a motion to approve the request. You either got to deny or approve. How do we get into discussion phase? A motion has to be on the floor. I have to have a motion and second on the floor to get into discussion. Seconds the denial, then, then we can right. discuss it. Can it not be changed? Like I'm looking at this picture on page 67, and it looks like it's going lengthwise forward as opposed to turning it 90 degrees. Well, they're so close to the sidewalk, they don't have anywhere else to put it. Like you can't go. It will still extend on on into city property. You see the Regardless if you look way? at the red dotted line, the red dotted line so is the property there. line. That way, and that house is right. You know, they're taking the. Okay. They're they actually they technically don't meet the setbacks of the property line requirements right now, but that's not well, a subject a, here. Why well, is a non-conforming building? It's been there for. Yeah. It was, a, it was a funeral home before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. been there forever. And, but one thing I would note very quickly is <coughs> as I looked at the cars that are parked on the front of your building, you're actually, this, this is not an easement, this is a right of way, which means it's there for a street. 
okay? And it's supposed to be kept clear as a street would be kept clear. Uh, we are, by parking cars in the front, you are actually violating the right-of-way law in the city by parking in the front. And the reason that it doesn't ever come up is because there's about half the stores and other things around that area that have that very same problem. <laughs> so we would have to be ticketing cars all day long if we were doing it. And we're not going to do that, obviously. But <clears throat> we need to make clear that this is a road right-of-way. It is not an easement on someone's property here. To do this, we would have to surplus the property. And probably it would have to be surplused in a way that would take up a full strip along the front. And understand, if the property were surplused, that doesn't mean you get it. Whoever buys it gets it. And somebody else could buy it out from under you. So you, you would still stand in danger of not being able to do anything at that point. So I want to make sure you understand all of the rules and regulations that come into, into being in this thing. Can the property be surplus? That's up to the city. They have to decide that. We don't do that. <laughs> You would be given a recommendation. We would, be, we would be asked to give a recommendation to whether we would well, want to. Just like Ray said, we y'all had the same issue with the property right around the corner that had the appliances. Yes. And y'all had a, a not favorable recommendation on that or favorable? No, no, no we denied the no. request for variance. But it came to the city board. We voted on it, correct? Well, yeah. you have to vote on our denial. No, 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 the, the surplus request came to you guys. Mm. And we voted that down. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know the kind of work you do, and, and I and. For the most part, I support your work, but this is not the solution to your problem, I don't think. I think there has to be another way to approach this. Um, and I see, an, I see other buildings at the back of the property that I'm not sure what they're used for, but possibly could you figure out for example, at the back of the property, there seems to be a small building similar to the 10 by 10. Right in the corner there, is it, would it be possible that you could do that? I don't know. It's not our job to tell you what way to do it, but that's one way you could possibly think of of getting the job done okay. or whatever. We want to do it, but we had set a bad precedent. Yeah. I yeah. Any further discussion from the commission? All right, we will proceed to vote on the motion um, to how, how does it have to be worded? Lee? Is it send an unfavorable recommendation? Yeah, it, was, it was just the, it was the motion to deny. Okay, we have a motion to de and second to deny the request for variance as requested. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The uh, variance in this case is denied. With nothing to come before, I entertain a motion to adjourn the zoning and appeals. I move to close. Second. second. Motion and second to close the Board of Zoning and Appeals. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. We are adjourned.